Hello students, in this video we'll construct an everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable function. First we consider a function which is going to be called distance from x to z. And what is this? This is the infimum of x minus n such that n is in z. What this function does is it picks the closest integer to the number x and it measures the distance. And so what we can see is this function has is a periodic function, so we can actually just draw it over one period. So here's one, here's one half, and then here is zero. Of course, the distance, and that's something like one half, the distance from zero to the integers is zero because zero itself is an integer. The distance from one to the integers is zero because one is an integer itself. And then what happens? The distance away from an integer grows linearly up to half because one half is exactly what? One half is exactly one half unit away from the closest integer. In this case, it's going to be symmetric, either zero or one. And then it starts to decline like this. And so that's one period. And of course, then this function will just repeat itself. So here's two, and then here's 1.5, for example. It'll do, have the same exact behavior, right, up to one half down to two. And so we see that this function over here, this distance function is actually continuous. So this function over here is a continuous function. This is a continuous function on all of R. And now I'm going to use this function to build another function. Define f of x to be the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, the distance 10 to the power n x is to the integers over 10 to the power n. Now notice that all the numerators, each numerator over here, the numerators are always less than or equal to 1 half, and so this series converges absolutely and uniformly, so the series converges absolutely and uniformly and so by the Weierstrass M test implies that f of x is continuous at every point. Okay, so f of x is a continuous function everywhere. No question there. That's just a consequence of the uniform, the, of the absolute and uniform convergence, and the Weierstrass M test. Now what I'm going to do is the following. So let's consider x in the interval zero to one. And what we can do is we can write x as point a one, a two, a three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so now, what is the distance from 10 to the power n x to the integers? Well, the distance from 10 to the n x to the integers z for this value x is going to be what? It's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be point a n plus 1, a n plus 2, et cetera, or 1 minus point a n 1, a n 2, et cetera, forever. And that just follows from the fact that if you multiply this number by 10, what's going to happen is you're going to pull out the first a1 through an as integers, right? And so you've basically just shifted the, the function over, and so that won't affect the calculation at all. So that is the calculation we have over here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to define, define a sequence of numbers that are going to 0 that will depend on x itself. So define delta m to be one of two things. It's either going to be negative 10 to the negative m, or it's going to be 10 to the negative m, and it's going to then be this, it's going to be negative 10 to the negative m if a m from the fung from x to the number x is either a 4 or a 9, and it's going to be 10 to the power of negative m if a m is not 4 or 9. And the reason for this is the following. So what we're going to do now is we're going to consider the difference quotient with this delta m sequence. Now, it's easy to verify that delta m is going to 0 as m goes to infinity. So now let's look at our difference quotient over here. So what will the difference quotient look like? I'm going to look at f of x plus delta m minus f of x over delta m. 
And now this delta M in the denominator is going to account for what? That's going to give me a, either a plus or a minus, and then a 10 to the power M. So I'm going to write this as plus or minus, depending on what X is, 10 to the power M. And then the sum, N goes from zero. We're going to stop and think for a second here. When I shift over X by delta M, what's going to happen? If, well, let's just write it out, actually. Let's say we'll go, we'll go to infinity first, and then we're going to have the distance from 10 to the power n x plus minus 10 to the negative m to z minus the distance 10 to the n x to z all over 10 to the power n okay now of course what happens when n and m when n gets to the level m then you're just shifting the x over by an integer. So this, if, so this difference, the numerator will be equal to zero in this difference quotient well, as soon as n hits the level m. So everything in the series from B, m and beyond will zero out. And so what we're going to have over here is we're going to have plus minus 10 to the power m. The sum n goes from zero up to m minus one of the distance 10 to the n x plus minus 10 to the negative m. We don't know if it's plus or minus to z. Minus the distance 10 to the power n x to z. All over 10 to the power n. Now the important thing to realize here is that what's going to happen? What happens over here is that the difference, the difference in the distance from this point over here to the integers and this point in over here to the integers is exactly going to be equal to what? You're only changing the mth unit in the decimal expansion. You're changing that mth spot by what? The mth spot is being changed by a plus or minus 1. So really, all we're changing this by, we're changing the distance to the integers, since it, in the case when the reason why we have a negative over here is that if if you are, if am is equal to 4, and if I, if I added 1 to the am, it would push me into the second region over here. And if it was equal to 9, it would push me into the next sort of range. So in other words, what's going to happen is this maintains that this, with this choice of delta m means that the distance between this point and this point is exactly going to be plus or minus 10 to the n minus m. So this is equal to plus or minus 10 to the power m. The sum n goes from 0 up to m minus 1. And then the top is going to be plus or minus 10 to the m minus n over 10 to the n. And what we have over here is we have the, the 10 to the m's are going to cancel out. The 10 to the n's are going to cancel out. And what we have here is we have the sum, n goes from 0 up to m minus 1, of a whole bunch of plus and minuses which depend on x. Now, as these plus and minuses depend on x, what can happen? Well, it's possible that you have enough pluses and minuses to get 0, but all these are 1 and negative 1. So what this is doing for every m is this adding up plus 1s and negative 1s, and the output of this is going to be an integer that's not 0 for different parities of m. So this depends on the parity of m of m and is an integer. So for infinitely many values of m, this expression over here will be an integer, which says that as m is going to infinity, this difference quotient over here for infinitely many values of m will be an integer. Therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of this difference quotient does not exist for any x in 0, 1. Now, I can run the same argument for different, uh, different values of x that are not in 0, 1 just by sort of shifting over, because if I do it between the 1 and 2, all I have to do is just modify that by saying I'm just really shifting that over back to the interval 0, 1. So this function is not differentiable at a single point, but it's continuous everywhere. Thank you very much.